golf definitely had a very fascinating year in 2022. The past year was filled with disputes, legal battles, suspensions, and a lot of money. Despite all the drama though, live golf may have been just what the sport has desperately needed. Now, since the Saudi-funded circuit parked its tanks on the PGA Tour's yard, we have seen dicks hurled back and forth between the two camps. But despite all their jibes, the PGA Tour loyalists should actually be thanking the rebels and their revolution. Why? Well, stick around to find out. Hello and welcome to Golf Pro, your number one stop for everything related to golf. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Also, turn on the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of our videos. Let's get into the video. Tiger Woods come back to competitions following an almost fatal car accident in February 2021 attracted a lot of attentions and was the talk of the town at the time. However, Live Golf ended up being the year's most interesting topic because it completely transformed the professional golf landscape. The extravagant, large-scale contracts Live has used to pull away the best names from the PGA Tour have generated a significant amount of debate. However, given that Asian owners are known to make significant investments in their sporting clubs, this is not at all surprising. Just take a look at the football clubs Man City and Newcastle as examples. With its apparently unlimited wealth supported by Saudi Arabia PIF, Live Golf has been able to spend 8 or 9 figure sums on signing fees as well as offer a prize pool that is so bloated that even people that come in last place will still take home $120,000 at every event. Rory McIlroy, the current leader in the global rankings, branded the proposed Live Golf circuits to be dead in the water in February after a number of well-known athletes swore allegiance to the PGA Tour. However, Live Golf has since then witnessed rapid growth in its collections of golfers that many had imagined. Major winners Cameron Smith, Phil Mickelson, Dustin Johnson, Brooks Kepka, and Bryson DeChambeau are just a few of its new additions. In an effort to counter Live Golf's intrusions into the sport, the PGA Tour announced a number of reforms. The reforms were viewed as being extremely significant, particularly financially. Jay Monahan announced that there would now be a minimum payment of $500,000 for all players on the PGA Tour in an effort to stop the continual flow of famous stars joining the breakaway for money. In order to keep up with Liv, prize money acquired a hefty fattening as well, with a new average purse of $20 million. In addition, players will receive $5,000 for missing the cut at the tournament, with previously unheard, unheard of sums awarded to PGA Tour players even when they don't take home the trophy. In addition to the eight tournaments they already announced in June, the PGA Tour has added four more events with an average prize pool of $20 million to the 2023 FedEx Cup regular season. The Player Impact Program from last year awarded 20 players as opposed to 10 and doubled the compensations from $50 million to $100 million. It meant that a player with a little social media following, like Victor Hofflin, who doesn't use Twitter, could place 20th and yet win $2 million. According to John Ram, the modifications resulted from the McIlroy Woods led crunch meeting to fight back against the breakaway, so the newly minted PGA Tour players can surely thank Liv for their well stocked bag accounts. Jay Monahan claimed the money for the new prize funds is coming from three primary sources increased revenue from the 2021 2022 season, reserves, and sponsors and partners. However, how long those sources of revenue will be able to sustain the tour's new expensive structure remains to be seen. The PGA Tour still falls behind Lyft Golf in terms of quality despite its financial injection. Even Tiger Woods has admitted that Lyft Golf's dollar is too strong for the PGA Tour to compete. He said they want to be a validated tour with world ranking points and they are buying up tours around the world and I don't know what their endgame is. It might just be an official member of the golf ecosystems and being recognized with world ranking points. I think that's what their intended goal is. You know, they have spent probably close to $2 billion this year. Who's to say they can spend $4 billion or $5 billion next year? We just don't know. It's an endless pit of money. In addition to better lining the pockets of players, the breakaway's arrival on the scene has also provided entertainment value to the sport. This battle has seen Mickelson's outbursts, suspensions, legal cases, and bitter exchanges of dicks and insults. The only thing we haven't seen from the war is a full-fledged brawl outside the pub. Perhaps they are saving it for Season 2. So we might just get to see it this year. Despite the fact that the gentleman's sport is rarely mentioned in sports' main news channel outside of Woods and the Majors, it has now almost continuously been in the headlines since last year. Despite there being no Ryder Cup, no Solheim Club, and no Olympics this year, all thanks to the fur surrounding Liv. 
Theatrics have also fueled the frenzy and offered material for the impending Netflix documentary on the PGA Tour, which has already hinted that lift golf and memes will be discussed, heightening interests in its release. Nevertheless, the soap opera is expected to continue with Lyft's second season, which will have an expanded schedule and has already hijacked one PGA Tour course. It remains to be seen if Norman and co can persuade any more superstars to join the dark side and how Lyft and the PGA Tour will continue to fund their new mega money plans. But one thing is for certain, golf will continue to make headlines. What do you think about this new golf rivalry? Let us know down in the comment section.